Hi guys, I'm Katie from the Yellow Electric family and today we're going to go over some terms that you'll need to know when you get an EV. So if you're an EV newbie and you've been researching EVs or looking at buying them and you're confused at some of the terminology, this video is for you. We're going to help you out so that you're not confused and you know all the lingo. For the first terms we're going to talk about basically relate to your miles per gallon and your gallons per mile. So, so you've got your miles per kilowatt, which is essentially the, the number of miles that you can go on a kilowatt hour. If you're going to put this in normal, quote unquote, normal vehicle terms, that would be how many miles you could go on a gallon. Then you have your watt hours per mile, which is essentially how much energy are you burning through to go a mile. So essentially that translates to your miles per gallon and your gallons per mile. A kilowatt is a thousand watts, which is a way to measure the amount of energy that you have in your battery. EVs will have different sized batteries, just like a gas vehicle will have a different sized gas tank, depending on the size of the vehicle, to the price of the vehicle, all different kinds of factors. It essentially translates to how many gallons can you have in your car, it's just the electric version of it. Electric cars can have anywhere from, it ranges a lot, and this is just a general number, but from 20 kilowatt hour battery to 100 kilowatt hour battery. And you'll just have to look at your vehicle, but essentially that's just like saying that you have a 20 gallon gas tank or you have a 50 gallon gas tank. It's just how much energy you can put into the car. Every vehicle has an EPA rating. The ratings that you might be familiar with with an ICE vehicle are the uh, miles per gallon that a, a vehicle can go. So your Honda Civic that can go 35 or whatever miles per gallon. For electric vehicles, they have an equivalent for that. So it's written as MPGE, which is miles per gallon equivalent. And typically they're a lot higher than what you would see on a gas vehicle. For instance, our Tesla can go almost for like 90 miles per gallon equivalent. So another one is the EPA range rating and that's how far the vehicle can go on a single charge. So it's just like saying how far can a car go on a full tank of gas, except you're talking again in the terms of, of an electric range. And just like with a gas vehicle, that range is probably going to be under ideal conditions. You're 55 miles an hour, so, so on and so forth. So when you're driving at highway speeds, it's typically less, just like in a gas vehicle. Inside EVs has done a lot of range testing with electric vehicles with, that are going 70 miles an hour. So if you wanna kinda see the difference between what the EPA rates it and what you're gonna get in real world experience, it's a good place to go to check out and find out just how much it eats away at the range to go faster. But that's the same thing that's gonna happen on your gas vehicles. That leads us into another term that you're gonna hear, which is range anxiety, which means that you're worried that your car is not gonna make it to the next charging station. You don't hear about this in the gas world just because there's so many gas stations everywhere, you just don't have to worry about it. But in the electric world, there's not as many charging stations, although it continues to get better every single day, you're still running into the fact that there's just not as many charging stations, so you start to get nervous if you're getting low on your battery range. Another term that you're gonna hear a lot is ICE or ICED, which is internal combustion engine, and which is a gas vehicle, and then if you, or diesel vehicle, but if you hear it say ICED, that means that someone with a gas vehicle is parked at a charging station. Essentially, that's just a way to say that somebody's taking up a charging station that shouldn't be because they can't plug in and charge. And sometimes people just don't know that they are sitting in a charging, charging station or what the markings mean on the concrete or the signs or what that thing is sitting at the end of the, at, at the, end of the parking stall. And sometimes people do it to, to be rude just because they think that EVs shouldn't be special and have a spot to park in, but it's actually because we need it to be able to charge. <laughs> the next thing you might hear people talk about a lot is regen or regen braking, 
which is your one pedal driving. It's the fact that the car has resistance that then puts energy back into the battery. It's not a lot of energy that gets put back into the battery, but in an EV, some of them give you the, well, almost all of them give you the choice of if you want to use that or not, but then you don't have to use the brake. The car will slow itself and stop itself um, just using that, that friction um, of movement to put energy back into the batteries. So another thing that you'll need to understand is your kilowatts when you're charging. So the more kilowatts that a charger has, the better. If you have a kilowatt or a charger with low kilowatts, then you're gonna charge really, really slow. If you have a charger with fast kilowatts, say 350 kilowatts, it's gonna be a lot faster. Now, some of, of how quickly you can charge is limited by your car's ability. If you find the faster chargers, then your car is gonna be able to charge at the top of its range. There are different levels of chargers, so a level one, a level two, and a level three. So kilowatts is abbreviated the KW, and when you have a level one charger, you're only charging at about one or two kilowatts. That's gonna be essentially your wall charger. So if you were to plug your car into your outlet at your home, that's about how quickly you're charging at a level one charger. So your level two is a 240 volt. So that's gonna be a special outlet in your home. So things that like big appliances are charged off of. Um, it's not gonna be your typical outlet in your home. And it's about five times faster than the level one chargers. So that's anywhere from five to nine kilowatts, the KW. So it's a lot faster, but it is gonna be a specialty outlet. It's not, you can't just find it anywhere. So then your level three charging is gonna be your DC fast chargers. These are gonna be EV specific chargers that you can get anywhere from 50 kilowatts to 300 kilowatts. So it's significantly faster than your level one or your level two chargers. Um, if you have the option to use a level three versus any of the other chargers, pick the level three. <laughs> it's gonna go a lot faster and you are going to uh, much more enjoy the process of owning an EV because you're not gonna be charging for hours and hours at a time. And something to mention is that that doesn't always necessarily mean that a level one or a level two charger is bad. If you are gonna be plugged in at a hotel overnight at a level two charger or a level one charger, that could be sufficient amount of time to charge and it's not causing you any trouble. But if you're on a road trip and you need to keep going and you need to charge more quickly, you wanna find those level three chargers versus the level twos or the level ones because at a level three charger, you're gonna be there an hour or less to get a full charge instead of hours at a time. There's different chargers and on most charging charge apps that you can use to find chargers, they're gonna indicate what kind of a charger that they are. So the J1772 is gonna be a level two charger. It can't be a fast charger. So then the next is a Chatamo, which is a little bit older style of a charger. Um, it is still DC fast charging, but there's been a lot of of growth in the technology since the Chatamo came out. Um, but you will still see those and it, it is still a level three charger. So CCS is a, an also a level three charger and it's gonna be faster than the Chatamo. And it's what's found on most uh, electric vehicles with the exception of Tesla because Tesla has its own charger, um, which would also be noted on uh, the charging app it would say a Tesla charger or a supercharger and those are Tesla specific charging locations and so one thing to note that is important is that Tesla's can use all of the other types of chargers so you have to have the appropriate adapter to make them work on the J1772's or the Chatamo's or the CCS you have to have an adapter for it but a Tesla will charge on those charging stations however other EVs cannot charge on the Tesla network. It is not possible. Uh, that may change in the future, but as of right now, if it's a Tesla specific charger, there is no way for an, another type of EV to use that charger. 
those that's all the terms we have for you today if you can think of a term that you think ev newbies should know definitely leave it in the comments down below so we can help everybody out as they move towards evs if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button so you can follow along as we navigate our life and adventures with our tesla model x we'll see you in the next video